Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kieran. I'm a junior doctor and a comedian working in Manchester. I'm joined by other Kieran, your Kieran too, who is uh, one of my best friends who's also just returned from being a doctor in Australia. And in this series, we're talking about everything about becoming a doctor, a UK doctor in Australia. So if you haven't seen the first videos, feel free to check them out because we're taking you through the journey. We've talked about why you might want to go. We've got the job offer. We have found it. We've done all the visa stuff, paid all our bug monies, and now it is time to book our flights and go to Australia. Where are we starting? Thank you for the introduction. I've been upgraded again to best friend. <laughs> I'm joined by one of my friends, Kieran. Mm. You've been demoted from best friend to friend as the videos have gone on. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess the last video was a good one. <laughs> You've got all your prep ready to go. You book your flights. Mm -hmm. You need your vaccinations. Mm -hmm. I don't know at the moment, but for me, I also need a negative PCR for COVID to be able to get through too. Now we've landed. You get off your flight. You go through and you have to declare. Oh, you have to declare all of the all of the foods. That was the big one. <laughs> yeah, you have to declare what 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 types of foods you have. And you think, have I actually kept any greens? Because that's worse than the detention that they might put you in. Don't they like take mud off your shoes and stuff yeah, like that? They, they, they they're very yeah, into it. Yeah, they really want to protect their soil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you made it through the soil scanner and now you're out and free and you can jump in all the soil that you need. You need to find accommodation. You can find tons of different websites to be able to compare different properties to be able to rent on. Airbnb is also booming in Australia. You can book through booking.com and when you found somewhere that you like, you'll do your normal inspections. You'll head over, for us when it was COVID time, it was all a virtual inspection on a mm -hmm. potato camera. And so we had to just presume that we were gonna like it, luckily it turned out okay. Did you book your accommodation before you went there? So we had, Ours is a little bit different from other people who might be going out there on their own or with a partner, but let's say they're going out there with a group of friends that got staggered entries like ours. So we had myself who was arriving in mid-July, a friend who was arriving at the end of July and somebody else who was arriving in mid to late August. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we first arrived, myself and the second person got an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. We stayed there and whilst we were in the Airbnb, we then started looking around for other properties. Whilst we were looking for these other properties, the other person was able to fly over and we all decided on what we, what we wanted to go for. We had the viewing and then, uh, and then we were able to take up the tenancy. What would you have done if you were going by yourself and you didn't know anyone? How, what, what would you have gone through to find accommodation? Would you have done the same thing and booked an Airbnb for a bit and then kind of decided about where you want to be afterwards? I think the same process. I don't think many people go through hospital accommodation if you go into one of the major cities. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different process if you are gonna be going to a smaller city. Mm -hmm. So let's say if you were going to fly into Brisbane, Brisbane would not put you up and you'd have to find your own accommodation. But if you flew into Cairns or if you flew into Darwin, the hospitals there, if you had jobs at hospitals there, they may pay for your accommodation until you find your own. So you can actually okay. be in hospital accommodation. I've got some friends who are halfway up the coast between Sydney and Brisbane and they've been put up in accommodation by the hospital until they find their own. Do, do they offer that or is that something they try that and negotiate? Is, that's something that they'll offer to try and attract people because okay. there's a real big disparity between, uh, I'm sure we'll talk about this this later in the disadvantages uh, about working in Australia, but there's a big dis disparity between the more rural places in Australia and the more urbanised places in Australia. And you, so you went with people and everyone managed to get the same place in Australia? Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. But we weren't, the first time we, when we were, well, when we were applying, um, we weren't particularly choosy on what or where within Melbourne. We just okay. all decided we were gonna be within Melbourne. And I think that's what most people who've, who've also followed have done. And is it like the UK in that there's just estate agents, you contact the estate agents, they show you apartments, and then you just put a deposit down on you one? Put, you put your bond in, yep, your deposit in, and then you pay your first month's rent. And but is that, that, is that time, the same as the UK? Is it like yeah, there's one no, month's rent is the yeah, deposit? Yeah, there's and, no no difference yeah. at all to that. First month, month rent will be the deposit fund. It goes to an Arbitrer who holds it for you and then gets released back to you once you complete your tenancy. 
Relative to the yeah. UK, how much is it? It really depends again on where you are. If you compare, if you're comparing to London, less, unless you're in really desirable parts of Sydney, which are incredibly expensive. I think slightly less than what you'd anticipate to pay in central London, you'd be paying in central Melbourne, let's say. How do people tend to get around? Would you go to Australia and rent a car? Would you look at buying a car? Or do people tend to go to Australia and take public transport everywhere? I think you need a car. You need a car. Yeah, I think you need a car. Yeah. Um, to or you or you at least need someone within the household to have one because the public transport is outside of the cities isn't fantastic. It's really mm -hmm. difficult. The timings they're not that regular for for public transport. The cycle lanes are a lot more prominent in a lot of big cities. So if you are just wanting to stay within a city, you can you can have your bike and you can travel around on your bike. The, in Melbourne, the trams are pretty good, I've mm -hmm. got to say. You've just got one key that you can pop your money on and you can tap in, tap off wherever you need to and that'll get you to most places in and around the city and some of the overground trains and buses too. But if you want to start really getting into what is the most desirable parts of rural Australia, then you really need a car to be able to go access some of the mountains, the deserts, the coastlines. And so did you guys buy or did you rent? So it, it makes a much bigger decision to buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would wholeheartedly say buy. Okay. Uh, just because if I use the example of at the end of my trip, I had some time before I was going to fly home. I looked at how much it was going to be to rent a car, and it was going to be five thousand dollars to be able to rent it to head from North Queensland back to Melbourne, and you can buy a car quite easily for mm -hmm. that amount and you at the end of the day have a car and you can sell it. So we've got to Australia, we've got our job, we've found our accommodation yep. and we're going to move on with the rest of the series. Make sure you don't miss it. So subscribe to the channel, make sure the notification bells are on. Thanks again, Kieran. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next video.